In this video, I'd like to cover draining down an open system. That's the one that we saw the black tank in the first two chapters of the other video, uh, where the copper pipe goes over the top of it. So as we vent these radiators and fill up the system, air goes in and the water can flow down. Otherwise, it wouldn't move. So that's what we call an open system. So first of all, we need to understand when we want to drain the system down we first need to go into the airing cupboard and we should find a valve either this type which is the modern type one uh, or the old-fashioned stockcock which I recommend to replace with these because all we need to do is just to turn it sideways and that stops the water going up into the loft there should also be another one of these by each tank. So you're going to have one small tank will have its own little lever and one large one should have its own little lever because our bylaws require we need to isolate each appliance separately. So there's one of these, maybe a bit smaller, under the kitchen sink, in the bath, basin, uh, utility, anywhere there's an outlet of water should have some means to just turn that off and nothing else so we can work on it. Otherwise we'd have to shut down the whole house and this job could take a couple of hours which would be unacceptable. So we turn it off from here and then we go to the lowest point to start draining down so we put a hose pipe on here or wherever it is maybe by the back door and we let that nut to open so we can start draining down so some of that tank water will go down and then it'll stop so what we need to do is with our radiator key so it's my favorite clock key because these are brilliant um, what we have to do is to go to the highest radiator furthest away from where we're draining down to introduce air into it. So we'll simply get our key, go to that highest furthest radiator and just gently open, open, open and you'll hear air going in. And downstairs that will be whooshing out quite quickly. So as we undo this valve very carefully remove it and maybe put it on the window ledge somewhere it's not going to get lost because that's important because we need to put it back yes so then we go to the second highest radiator furthest away so we do all of the upstairs if there is an upstairs and let that water go down when we go to downstairs radiators again usually just the ones nearest this one that we're going to change the valves but obviously we won't be draining the system down to change one valve if one is damaged or broken rusted you would be wise to replace all of them because they're all at the same age and while we're draining down we can make use of that because each time we drain down we introduce more fresh water which is contaminated so we want to keep the drain offs and draining downs to the minimum as it were so now we drain down everything else we can remove this valve replace it with the new one and then we do everything in reverse so we're going to turn this one off completely so there's no more water going to escape we put in all of the radiator vent keys into the each radiator before we do anything else except for the highest furthest away that's the time we now put our f2 or x200 silencer this is the one that's going to be working and cleaning our system out for a long period so as i said this has to be going into the highest furthest radiator once this bottle is empty if you have a larger system a victorian house you need two bottles and Fernox also make long tubes with concentrated so you can actually pump it into the radiator without having this um, pouring in as it were which is quite a, a fiddly job so once we've put our inhibitor silencer into the system then we can close off that top radiator we can go back to the airing cupboard and turn our stock off on full so now water will start running in through that ball valve and then fill it up the system. Once the 
expansion tank, that little black tank in the loft is full of water, we go down to the radiator we worked on. So all of the low ones that we drain down from come first and then we go upstairs and then we go from the furthest one from where we pulled in the inhibitor and slowly vent that and then we gradually work all the way back to the highest radiator furthest away and we let the air out and all we need there is a little bit of kitchen roll or toilet paper and the key just very gently open each radiator first as soon as it coughs and splatters just turn it off gently don't over tighten it because it's an arrowhead and we don't want to damage the point so just gently close it off that's enough and then tissue paper um, just to take up the slack we don't need to worry about anything else and then slowly the whole system will be fine if it's possible pop up into the loft and just double check everything is now finished that the little tank in particular the ball valve is now set up and then switched off and it's a long way from the overflow pipe and check the overflow pipe and also have while you're there have a look at the big tank do the same again remove the insulation carefully and then just see that the ball valve is not touching the insulation uh, I've seen many houses where the cover of the tank has sagged down in the middle and it's pressed the ball valve down and it keeps running and running so just make sure that there's something waterproof going across the top of the tank to stop that sagging job so once we're happy with the lofted sound the overflow pipes are connected everything is as it should be um, then we can go back to the boiler switch it onto central heating and let it warm up once we've finished with the central heating side, then we can turn on the hot tap and open up the valves or whatever to make sure that the hot water side works, which it should do. Uh, in the airing cupboard above the cylinder, there should be just an open pipe uh, and maybe a small short one with a brass automatic air vent and here's a picture of what I've done here and this is what we teach our engineers so where there's a cylinder there should be a small little bit of pipe and a brass filling venting valve called an automatic air vent AAV so that takes care of the filling and venting on an open system If you're an installer, let me give you a tip about venting. So as before, we've put all of the vents back into the radiators, apart from the furthest one, which is the highest one. So that's where we need to introduce our, our boiler silencer liquid. A, a good way is, is removing the stopper end, the blanked off one. So if we just unscrew that, and then you're going to have a fitting here which is half inch BSP to 50 mil copper or it's going to be male line to copper that we screw in. So what we're going to do is put this in here and just tighten it up to the end. That's still open because that's important to allow air in. Now if we've got some old brass or any other funnel that we can put into our uh, piece of um, male iron to copper here again we can just simply push that into place and then we can easily pour in our inhibitor uh, because if you don't leave that open this will then bubble up and we'll be here all day so we can just slowly pour the inhibitor in the silencer um, and then once we're finished with that we can remove this side and put our blanking one back into place so we just take that out just undo it done the two too many turns we can put our blanking cap back into place and then we can put our pin back into this side so we can now start filling back up again and we do it the same way as before but now you know it's going to be quicker and we've got our silencer in the system ready to be whooshed around the heating system first and then the hot water side second so this is a really good fast way of introducing um, liquid into the system or you use the pumping type ones which we saw earlier here's just a reminder again so um, I hope you found filling and venting useful on an open system